Hello everybody, hope everything is well, and as always, let's jump right into this. Now this article I'm showing you from 1944 is talking about the Nazis' new air weapon. Now we gotta remember the Nazis were heavy into the occult. You can go back to my previous video, the occult space program. It talks about how, it shows how we got all the, uh, their scientists after World War II, okay? Another note, German... Germany was heavy into the occult before World War II, okay? Um, <clears throat> it showed you how Hitler was trying to get the spear of destiny, things of that nature. Now, uh, von, ben, von Braun, who was one of the scientists we got at the World War II, even said, according to ancient aliens, that they got this knowledge from other beings, okay? Now, I want to show you this clip showing you that these occultic Hebrews were working together with these occultic Nazis so that they could find their origins in the Middle East. Because if you go back to, again, my previous, one of my other previous videos talking about were the red headed giants black, and it talked about how all those experiments went down in the Middle East, okay? Um, Minister Inky tells you about that, and that's one of the beings we're going to be talking about later, Inky, okay? Now, I want to uh, show you this clip from the documentary, The Greatest Story Never Told, talking about this transfer agreement and how um, to celebrate this um, treaty they put, they had a coin of the Nazi swastika in the, 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 the Zionist Star of David on a coin. Check this out. And it gets into um, many other things as well that connects to this. Just, like I said, check this out. Secret negotiation between the Nazis and the Zionists in 1933, which allowed German Jews and their assets to go to Palestine. A group of Zionists at the same time was quietly negotiating an agreement with the Nazis to allow the immigration of German Jews and the transfer of their assets to Palestine. That deal, reported in August 1933, was the transfer agreement. Palestine, sparsely settled by Jews at the time, was radically changed as a result. I lived in Palestine from 1933 to 1936, and uh, we saw every week transports of German Jews coming to settle in Palestine. German Jewish settlement of Palestine was, for a time, official Nazi policy. These photos of Jewish life in Palestine, along with a lengthy text, appeared in 1934 in the Berlin paper Der Angry. The publisher, Hitler's propaganda minister, Josef Goebbels. A Nazi visits Palestine was the title of the multi-part series. A medal was struck by Goebbels in commemoration. On one side, the swastika. On the other, the Star of David. Hitler demanded one concession for the transfer agreement, that the call for a boycott of the Reich, raised by Jews here and elsewhere, be rejected by the Zionists. The Zionists made that concession.
All right, now I want to show you this clip here of um, how these entities moving in and out of our reality. All right, this um, video right here by Gaia goes more in depth to that. Just um, uh, listen real closely. To UFOs and Bigfoot, tales of the unexplained have been a part of humanity's story since the beginning. Ancient alien theorists will look at the Bible and chalk up every bizarre event to aliens, while a religious scholar may look at contemporary alien encounters as manifestations of demons. Bigfoot and other cryptids have a strange habit of showing up near UFO sightings, and those who encounter either of these phenomena often discover newfound psychic abilities. Could there be a common cause that explains all paranormal events? One of the most famous sustained paranormal experiences is the Mothman incident of 1966. For 13 months, Point Pleasant, West Virginia was plagued with sightings of a bizarre winged humanoid, accompanied by mysterious lights in the sky, animal mutilations, and other accounts of paranormal activity. Journalist John Keel famously documented this prolonged period of unusual events in his book, The Mothman Prophecies, which was later made into a film of the same name. These simultaneous events were not new to Keel. He often wrote of window areas, specific locations on our planet where paranormal events were far more likely and even expected to occur. For experiencers and believers of the paranormal, the greatest frustration often lies in the lack of abundant physical evidence. A few landing marks here, a bit of fur there, and even the occasional photograph don't seem to be enough to convince the skeptics. After decades of researching such cases, Keel developed an elegant hypothesis which explains the troublesome disparity between excessive testimony and scarce physical evidence. His book, The Eighth Tower, written at the same time as the Mothman prophecies, proposes a sort of unified theory to explain all paranormal events. These entities are able to shift up and down the electromagnetic spectrum, appearing and disappearing as they please. Keel called this the super spectrum, and he referred to the beings inhabiting it as ultra-terrestrials. This could explain the variety of electromagnetic effects often- Get it now? Not extra-terrestrials, but ultra-terrestrials. One who can, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> I gotta grab some water, I apologize for that. But, um, one who can manipulate uh, uh, reality, transcend realities um, which I talked about before in my previous video how we are going back to that returning back to what we once were okay I'll play the rest of this for you associated with paranormal events cars stall widespread power outages occur radios and telephones go crazy and battery operated devices refuse to work clocks and watches have also been known to stop in the presence of UFOs monsters and ghosts Keel believes these beings are native to the Earth, which explains their manifestation in different forms throughout the ages, but that they inhabit physical dimensions beyond normal human perception. This theory fits with scientific understandings of how our brains perceive the world around us. It is well known that our senses are only equipped to pick up a very small slice of physical activity. Dogs, cats, and other animals are able to hear audio frequencies we cannot, is it simply coincidence that they seem to have a sixth sense for the paranormal? Pet psychologist Marty Miller has said, Sensing the supernatural is natural for dogs because they don't judge it. People could see ours or spirits, but they either don't believe they exist or think that if they do exist, we could not see them. Furthermore, our sensory organs are constantly capturing far more information than our brains can process. One of the most critical functions of the brain's sensory response is filtering out information that it deems unnecessary. Pattern recognition plays a large role in this process. When you see something that looks like a tree, your brain acknowledges the general shape of a tree and quickly creates the idea of a tree. But what happens when you observe something that fits no recognized pattern? What we pay attention to is largely determined by our expectations of what should be present, said Christopher Chabri, a cognitive psychologist in an interview with the New York Times. Without expecting something, 
we're unlikely to pay attention to it, he says. And when we are not paying attention to something, we are surprisingly likely to not see it. This could also explain the common motif described by Kiel and many other researchers that when you start studying these phenomena, they begin to reflect back, occurring with more regularity and even responding to your thoughts. It seems that once your brain recognizes these beings and begins paying attention to them, your odds of glimpsing them improve. In the 1960s, writer Gustav Davidson was compiling a massive book of historical accounts called Dictionary of Angels. Davidson had never had a paranormal experience before, but during his writing, he was literally bedeviled by angels. Participants in the growing CE5 movement go one step further, intentionally working to summon this sort of contact. All right, we're going to be talking about this um, soon after this video. A close encounter of the fifth kind refers to an experience in which someone interacts in a purposeful way with an unidentified flying object or its inhabitants. Some ufologists, most notably Dr. Stephen Greer, have developed protocols for intentionally initiating contact, believing that a focused meditation can promote interaction with nearby beings. Practitioners claim a surprising level of success with these protocols, producing all manner of documentation showing strange lights and other manifestations during CE5 meditations. Could it be that we are constantly surrounded by these ultra-terrestrials? and our focused attention is all that is necessary to perceive them. Of course, there is the possibility that the existence of paranormal entities throughout history could be chalked up to Jung's theory of the collective unconscious, revealing itself through vividly overactive imaginations. Or could we be living on a densely populated, multi-dimensional planet, alongside beings who have interacted with us for centuries, leaving little trace within our own narrow perception of reality? Okay, now I showed this video in one of my other previous videos called You Master Reality, You Master the Occult, You Master Reality. Okay, <clears throat> now this is how I think um, these wars were fought in ancient times. Alright, when people were fully activated, they were able to change their whole body into light um, and have an effect of that of a nuclear explosion or bigger. But um, again, remember I showed this video, check this out. Um, this is pretty much what's been going on, folks. Because we have the ultimate energy with inside us. And it can be, and, and if you read the Kabbalah, it talks about how we can be as high as the gods or lower than the animals. And that's what makes the human special because they have the potential to be on both extreme ends of the spectrum uh, rise and fall and things of that nature now well let me just uh, here oh, oh my god whoa, whoa, just don't understand also want to point out that this is why I believe that um, melanated people also known as black people should get back into magic um, get back into their tradition so that we can start doing this again and then we can have our own civilization our own everything um, I'm gonna shoot I'm gonna be showing you again in a little bit again because the people who rule the world are cultic in nature themselves they deal with this magic all right and they tell everybody else it's fake but just like I said check this out what is that orange 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 object look up oh, oh my god well, Feel just don't, don't, don't talk stand too up, much. Please. Uh, crouch down and look because you'll block our cameras. Wow. Those behind me may move and stand up. Cause... Okay, that you see that color? Yeah. That's not a no, no. Oh, no. Now, remember, these things are manifesting itself from different planes of existence or different dimensions. Okay? Oh, no, that's, that's so a So let's ship. thank them for coming. Wow, and it's above the sea Please level. turn off your night scope, Charles. I, I know, I keep pausing it. And when you when you do these meditations, arming and, and things of that nature, chants, that's a broadcast. All right? Prayer. 
all right? Certain, uh, when, you, when you meditate and, do, and you're giving it off certain thought waves, all right? Meditation has shown to change the plasticity of your brain, okay? So you're raising your, your frequency. So that's all being picked up by these other beings, all right? And I'm going to show you in a bit how these occultic um, Hebrews are still in communion with Inky. Now, check this out. Uh, just Let's just watch the rest of this. I'm going to play like 30 more seconds of this just to show you. Off. Someone's infrared or whatever. Yeah, that's Charles. Oh, oh whoa. Oh, here they come. There are two. Whoever's right in the front, if you can kind of just stay low, because your low. head is right. You can get on your knees in front yeah. of you. Look at this, how gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I'm looking with the night scopes. There's no smoke. There's no trails. These are not flares. And, oh, my goodness. Okay, let's welcome them here. Oh, they're so they're, beautiful. They, they're waiting for us to arrive. Shock police photographs. Yeah. All yeah. cameras should be filming. So connect to them in your consciousness and invite them here. These are the golden ones I talked about. See how gold? Yeah. Part because the horizon is only seven to ten miles, depending on the conditions. So it's probably a couple miles. Everybody wow. see them? Did you hear him say the golden ones? Who do you think that's? Who do you think that's linking to? I'll leave that. For y'all to decide. All right, now this next video where they want to build the third temple. All right, this was seen over the dome of the rock. All right, which is a very special place spiritually for Muslims and Hebrews. All right, or the fake Hebrews, I should say. All right, but check this out. Uh, for those who think they're still not in communion. All right. Okay. Now I want to show you uh, this. I want to show you this clip from the fourth kind, but it wasn't available. So I'm going to read this. Line from the movie, and then I'm gonna show you this other clip showing you the possession. Now, when these beings possess uh, their experiment, because that's what's going on right now, and a lot of the, this took place in Alaska, all right, Nome, Alaska, which the population's like a little over 3,000, okay, because again, the uh, these ancient alchemists, and that's that's what it is, uh, which we would call non-human. All right, and human, mortal, these are all titles, because we have been lowered down to the five senses. Some of you can are on can activate the six, you know, 
you can see spirits, things of that nature. But most are on the fifth, only have, uh, only operate on the five senses. So they don't, they, that's why most people don't even believe certain things. Because we're not even using our optimal senses. Alright. Now, uh, let me just read this to you. I thought it was Arcadian. Alright, this is, maybe I should have showed the clip first, but I'll show it after. I thought it was Arcadian, but it's not. It's Sumerian. I'm sure of it. This is widely considered by my peers to be the holy grail of dead languages. But we haven't deciphered the entire lexicon. Our creations, the last two words, I'm not sure the first two. Examine is the first word. The last word is ruin or destroy. Our creation, examine, ruin or destroy. Ruin, destroy who? It's in an incomplete translation. We can't be sure exactly what's being said, but whatever it is, it sounds aggressive. I'm sorry, but none of this is making any sense. Um, it's a verbalized recording of the Sumerian language. Now, we're talking about the oldest language in human history, for whatever reason, recorded in your room. What was happening, what was being done to me, what is, un what is unsettling is that whatever it is, the vocals, they don't sound ordinarily or ordinary human. Now, again, when we talk about ancient humans, again, uh, they are not human. We would, we would have to consider them non-human because they were, first of all, they had um, access to higher senses. That's number one. So, right there doesn't even put them in the, um, the, <clears throat> the category of human. All right. Now, they look humanoid. Two eyes, two legs, two arms, one head. All right. <clears throat> but these beings are different from us because they're on a higher level. Once we reach that level, then we ourselves will become non-human. I talked about this in my previous video, how um, humans uh, come from a non-human origin. Because uh, again, these are just, these are titles. Like Inky, it's just a title. Enlil, it's just a title. Okay. Now let me play this clip for you. Um, I'm sure some of you saw this on the fourth kind. Okay. Now, I'm not saying everything about this is true. It's supposed to be based on true events. All right. But the fact that they're bringing up, again, um, Samaria, which I talked about in the beginning of this video, how that's where most of the experiments were going down. Okay. Because you got to remember, uh, it was one landmass, Pangaea. And we wanted to know how to create another man. Do you see what I'm saying? Because we, and when I talk, when I say we, I'm talking about the melanated person, the melanated man, woman. Why do you think we fell? This was all supposed to happen. All right? So we can better learn who we are. Because the only, for for you to know better, you have to fall. So you, you got to rise again. But I'm, I'm, I'm jumping around. Sorry. But let me, let's watch this clip. And then we'll continue on here. Um, I also want to point out, before everybody got abducted in these videos, uh, in this video, in the movie, they would see an owl, okay, which we'll talk about after this clip. Now remember when they when they're getting possessed, these beings are on another dimension, all right, another frequency. They can be right in the room next to you. Do you see what I'm saying? But they're on a whole nother, like I said, frequency. They're 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 moving at a higher vibratory rate. Okay. Um, we also talk about how there was there's crystals in our brain, all right, in the pineal gland. All right, they pretty much are putting their light within that. And I know this sounds confusing, but that's how possession happens, okay? 
It's, it's, it's pretty much control of your pineal gland because that's where your soul sits. All right. Well, let me continue this. Okay, um, now this owl, which you see right here, the Moloch, which is a Canaanite god, which is also, again, in the Middle East, all right, you might have seen this owl on, this tap, owl tattoo on the back of Drake, okay, you might have worn a shirt on it and everything. Now, this owl has to deal with child sacrifice. You, you heard how it was taking the child, see what I'm saying? Now, again, these, um, they're in cahoots with these beings, all right, which, again, are beings from who turned on the great mother, which you can say, all right, they wanted their own, this is why we have, why, why do you think this is going on, I already told you, you can go back to, my, all my videos be, uh, are talking about this. All right. Um, why people biological experiment things of that nature? Why do you think they're running things? These um, the synagogue of Satan's running things. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, I already showed you the transfer agreement. Why they wanted to go to the Middle East? Okay. Um, uh, the the Brits even gave them land that they owned in India. You can look up the letter of 1917 to Lord Rothschild. I'll put that in the description below, actually. I'm sorry we couldn't get into it in this video. Now, like I said, this owl, um, the Bohemian Grove doing child sacrifice, okay? Most of your celebrities, politicians, okay? Because Freemasonry and... Uh, Freemasonry is ran by Kabbalistic Hebrews, which is an occultic uh, society. Again, the Kab and the Kabbalah really is just dealing with activating higher uh, processes of the mind. We, again, certain breathing exercises so that you can activate your own spiritual power, so that you don't fall under control of these symbols that are around us in our society every day. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is the location of ancient Sumer. I'm just trying to show those who don't know, uh, which is right next to Egypt, okay, Mediterranean Sea. Let me show you where Canaanite or Canaan was located, all right? A prosperous and ancient country at times independent as others, um, a tribunary to um, Egypt located in Lebanon region of present day Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Israel. Now, what have you been hearing on the news for the last three, four years? Do you see what I'm saying? Um, you can go back to my previous video talking about uh, the 2000 plan to secure the realm. All right. I talk about that. Now, let me show you our modern day map here. This is where it's at right here. Now, you see, this is where Samaria is located. Okay. Ancient Canaanite was located around this area. Why do you think they're trying to take that over now? 
I'm trying to tell y'all folks here, nothing's by accident. Okay? They're on a manifest of destiny, first of all. Take over their world, take over the world, or the plane, the side of the plane, because they feel like it's theirs. And they've been promised by this ancient geneticist or alchemist, okay, which some would call Yakub. All right. Um, like I said, um, I said Inky, these are all titles um, who are showing them this, who are still in communion, okay? Thank you for listening and peace and